keyword, the locker room. How you make this, Jay? Welcome back to the locker room and foot goals. Uh, I'm Fajardo One BW. That's Ivan. Ivan the Great. <laughs> um, cool. So, Ivan, how have you been? Been busy, man. Enjoying. Uh... That's pretty much it. That's all I do. Just watch Premier League and play my guitar. Okay. Okay. Well. It was another interesting week in the Premier League. A lot of upsets, I want to say. Uh, yeah, and you know some obvious winners, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the league and where it stands. As you can see here, we have Arsenal still on top, but now instead of just being up by one point, they're up by. Four. Four, but we'll get into the reason why. Let's take a quick peek at the whole table here. A lot of familiar faces at the bottom. Some have moved out of the bottom, so mm -hmm. mm, interesting. Well, let's take a look at the games that happened this past week. So we had Brentford versus Brighton in what I would call an upset. Uh, Brighton has been sitting on on the top part of the table. Pretty much since the beginning of the season. Uh, they've, they've been within the top four, top five, and they were not looking like they were relinquishing their, their position. They, they've they given some of the bigger, na bigger name clubs uh, mm -hmm. uh, a, a real, you know, a real challenge. Uh, they beat a few, and then Brentford came in and said, yeah, no. <laughs> How do you feel about this game? I felt like it was definitely an upset in the aspect of Brighton were doing really good. But Ivan Tony, man, you know, I, I definitely think he's one of the most informed forwards at the moment in the whole league. Unstoppable. Either he's scoring or he's assisting. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised that it was him that made that uh, that gamble, you know, work. Because it was a very uh, solid Brighton lineup, man. Like, they could have really stopped that team at any moment, but it was just that guy. They couldn't stop him. Ivan Tony did great. Yeah, well, he got he got a brace. He got the two goals. I mean, the formation. How do you feel about him not being able to, not being playing for England at the moment? Listen, that's a. So. In my personal opinion, England has a very big problem. Uh, this is where they were knocked down from the top league in that Europa Super League kind of thing, internationally, right? Nations League or whatever, yeah. Yeah, the Nations League. Um, I think a lot of they have a lot of good players, a lot of talent, but because they believe in their um, in their league as much as they do. It's one of those situations that um, that really, I think, hinders them to a certain degree because their players are only playing against each other. It's almost like being in practice. And yeah, obviously there's a lot of internationals in the Premier League. But at the same time, everybody knows this type of game, right? Um, whereas other countries have players in their home, uh, home leagues playing in multiple, uh, in different leagues. You have players in, in the Santander League, uh, the French League, French League of One, uh, and the Premier League. So they have players playing in different places and gives them like a, a different spice to, to their game where, you know, they, they're, they're seeing different types of movement, 
different types of plays and things like that. Whereas the guys of, that play for England, mm-hmm. they pretty much all play in England, right? And and the Premier League only. Right. So they're very one one track, uh, a one track mind. They have the same thing, no diversity, and I think that right. that's actually lowering their uh, the quality of that club. Uh, of that international club. I think it really hinders their growth. Um, I think that they should also be sending, you know, some of their internationals should be uh, playing in other leagues, not just the, uh, the English Premier League. And I think that that's, that's the big thing for them is, you know, they got real complacent just playing in the Premier League and not right. play. And granted, yeah, the Premier League is technically, in my opinion, I believe in yours as well, um, the best uh, football league there is, but there's yeah. different there's different styles of games, right? And you go you go to Spain. There's a lot more finesse. It's a little bit of a slower build up. You play in in France, and it's more technical. You play in Italy, and you are behind bars because it's all locked down, right? So. Having players that, that that know all these differences, I think, would really help uh, England in their quest to, to get back on top of the international table. Uh, but if they continue the way they're going, I think it's just going to be one of those situations where they're going to play themselves down, right? So yeah. I'll, I'll give There's you another... There's definitely no signs of them changing either because that's what they've been doing mm-hmm. probably since they wanted back in the 60s. So. Yeah. You know, and, and then I, I'll give you another example of, of a country that used to do that and has changed their ways. The United States, right? The United States, um, they used to just have, like, their players, obviously, the, their international players. But they didn't really, they had, like, one, maybe two guys that played played out, played in um, in the Premier League, or uh, and that was it, actually. Uh, Landon Donovan played in uh, in the Premier League, and so did Dempsey. That was it, though. And, and oh, and Howard. But yeah. outside of that, everybody else was in, in the U.S., which left little room for growth. Like they didn't they didn't expand, they didn't get better. You know, it was just the same old USA for so long. And it wasn't until I want to say maybe three three years ago, after that last World Cup, and maybe even a little bit before that last World Cup. USA actually had players start playing outside. You have players in, in the Bundesliga. You have players in, you know, in the Italian League, uh, you know, Italian League One, um, in, in in the Santander League, in the French League, in the Premier League, and that diversity and playing that much higher opposition and higher quality players has improved the skill of the overall team because. I feel like they bring something different, a different mentality or a different opinion or a different look uh, from somewhere else to say, hey, you know, this doesn't work. Hey, that works. Maybe we should try this, you know. And with England, they're so used to seeing the same thing. When they see something different, it's hard for them to kind of like overcome that hurdle because they haven't seen it. Right. You know, yeah, football is football, right? But. There's different techniques, there's different styles, there's different plays, and when when you're just learning from one channel, you don't actually get to to grow, you know, by um, just looking at the one channel. You have to grow by looking at multiple channels and learn the lesson here, learn the lesson there, learn the lesson there. And for England, it's a sad situation that that they are where they are internationally. I don't think they're gonna do well in um, in the World Cup, but hey, they're there. Right. That they are. Let's see if uh, Ivan Tony actually makes any impact in the World Cup too for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll we'll see. Again, it's one of the see like that's another thing. Like I with, with Ivan Tony, it. I think the reason he's succeeding right now in the Premier League is because because of the the route that he's taken to get there, right? Um, coming through the championship, um, where the championship is, is a, I don't want to say it tougher because there's less skill, 
But it's a knife more fi- it's a physical it's a more physical you know and like you said a knife fight right you know so it, it it brings a different aspect which is why why I think he's finding success here in the Premier League because um, the Premier League players they're not used to that you know so it makes it difficult for them to really try to stop him especially because he has a skill and he can be in a knife fight too yeah you know yeah, he's a tough he's a tough forward man I like him. Let's see. I mean, yeah, for Brighton, they had a really good squad out there. Um, surprised they couldn't get it, get anything really going. Um, you know, the only the only aspect of Brighton that I would I would like them to improve is their their striker position. I mean, Welbeck is he's good. Uh, he's aging at, though. That's uh... he's aging, but he's good at best. He's not anything crazy. He's nothing uh, over the top. Uh, I mean, Gross, he's there. Again, same thing. Like, he's okay, um, but he's nothing over the top. Uh, your midfield is is where they do have a lot of success. That's where a lot of the playmaking comes from for Brighton. So maybe mm-hmm. if they were to uh, look into trying to get um, a striker in the transfer window for January, maybe that, that'll help them take, you know, take that next step and really stay... Uh, competitive in the top five. Yeah, I would agree with that. I definitely think it's a striker hunting season. A lot of people want a striker. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at the next game. Leicester City versus Crystal Palace. Uh, What's your opinion on this game? How do you think this went? It was kind of like a boring game, man. Um, There was really no like need to win from Leicester City and I don't understand why they're playing like that when they're at the table in relegation zone and also the fact that I don't think this team should be down there they have a really decent team here you know like they're well known for like building the squads um, I know they're not a club that buys players per se they're more of a selling club but I'm just shocked by by these players at the moment from uh, Leicester. I don't know for how long is um, Rogers going to keep his job, mm-hmm. but we'll see. And as for Crystal Palace, I don't know, man. They've been doing really good ever since uh, Patrice uh, Vieira became uh, the head manager. Mm-hmm. I know there's they had a little bit of issues with uh, Saha, okay. like off off the field type of a thing. I'm not sure if that has affected his confidence, and that's why he wasn't really up his best today. I mean, not today, this in this game. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, me personally, um, I consider this a win for Leicester. And the reason I consider a win for Leicester is because, as, as you alluded to before, it's not a loss. They, one, they've been at the bottom of the table for so long at this point in this season, right? Yeah. Uh, two... They kind of found a little bit of a groove um, in week nine, where they got where they got a uh, a win. Um, you know, so it looks like they're finally finding their ground where they can start building on, right? Uh, so for them, in my opinion, this is a win. They didn't lose, uh, and they stayed competitive. Um, so for them, I, uh, again, it's a, a, a big deal. Now, for Crystal Palace, I think it's a huge letdown um, because they have been playing well. They've had some really good, um, you know, good movement with and off, uh, and off the ball uh, when playing bigger teams and better teams and teams that are higher in the, in the standings. And then to not be able to take a team like Leicester. See, for Crystal Palace, this is a team, Leicester's a team that they need to beat. Like it should be automatic. That that should be a given, mm-hmm. right? Because of the whole scenario of how Lush has been playing, the fact that they couldn't get in there and you know put anything on the board and they just couldn't win, that says that you know they might be facing some trouble coming up. Um, they they might be telling off oh, something's wrong, something's off. So that has personal problems may be affecting his uh, abilities to play. Well, it, and if that's the case, and this is why you try to create a deep bench. Right, you need to be able to replace them with somebody, 
and maybe uh you know take a step where uh, a step forward and you know or at least have someone who's suitable enough that can that can produce like he can when he's playing at his top form you know so yeah right. pretty, but a, a pretty much a snoozer right it nothing crazy happened Definitely no, nothing won't. Yeah, no, nothing that you can write home about. And what's sad about um, Leicester is, like, they do have quality players. You have Tailsman, you have Madison, you have Castagna. Like, these are three guys that, that any team in the Premier League would love to have as part of their starting eleven. Yeah, I mean, even, like, Jamie Vardy also. Can't forget about Madison. Madison is a, a big player also, like. No, that's what I said. Madison, Tailsman, and, and Castagna. Yeah, I just can't. I don't understand why they can just show up a little bit more. Yeah, uh, who knows? I, I I don't think that they're gonna be at the bottom of the league the whole season, mind you. I think mm-hmm. they're gonna get out. But it's like games like these are the things that hinder the mentalities of them to get above what from where they are. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it gets a little, it becomes tougher and tougher the longer it takes for you to come back higher up in the table towards the end of the season, you know. They need yeah. recruitment, and I know that play, the placement of the, where they are in the table does make a factor on how much money they're going to get, and, you know. I mean, this is definitely an example of what happens when you don't back the manager in the summer, getting him the players that he needs. You know, you're not even really bringing academy players like that. You're just kind of, like, making him play with the same players again. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think we alluded to this in one of our previous shows, but I think the loss of Schmeichel uh, was oh, huge. Oh, that's another one, too, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that that was a huge loss of them. I think he was a general when it came to, and to he the was back four. Yeah. He was captain. He was a top uh, goalkeeper. So, 100% agree with you on that, man. You know, like, uh, uh, but see, this is, this is where stars are made. This is a moment for somebody to step up and take over. Madison's been trying to do it, but I... I don't know. I get a feeling like not everybody's on board with Madison and the way he handles things. Tailsman looks um, quiet at times, like too quiet. Uh, not 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 a strong enough voice to really uh, lead the team. Maybe it's because of his age. Um, and then Vardy, I mean Vardy's Vardy. He's just a hard worker, but he's more of the show. You know, I'm gonna show you what I do. Yeah, and I hope you guys follow kind of players. So I think they're just they're missing an ingredient to to try to get um you know to try to become a better team. A lot of them are also like Tealmans. I know Madison, and I'm not sure if maybe Vardy. I know they're all going through contract you know talks mm-hmm. with the team. So I'm not sure how much that also affects the on field performance. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Well, let's go on to the next game. Fulham and Bournemouth. 2-2. Very exciting. Very exciting. I think it was a tale of two different halves. Um, beginning of the game, I mean, Bournemouth just kind of brought it brought it right from the opening, uh, yeah. opening whistle. Um, hey, look. Solanke, the guy I said that he, he'd have an important role to play for that team, huh? There you go. <laughs> right? And you called out uh, Lerma. So, there they go. You know, um, yeah, they were up 2-1. to one. Oh, my boy, Andreas Pereira got, got an assist. There you go. Um, how you call it? Um, but, Bortmouth, you know, you, you have a 2-1 lead against another team that you're in the same area of the table with. It's one of those things that I, I feel like a lot of teams do this. They get a lead, and then they stop taking the risk that got them the lead. And I feel like, granted, they're risk, right? And there's always a penalty to the reward. But at yeah. the same time, it's like if you played scared, it's just a matter of time before the other team puts one in, stuff like that. Like, you can't just play on your heels. Yeah, you have to be able to to go out there and keep taking some risks because the risk is what led you to get in the lead. But once you stop taking those risks, you allow the other team to kind of dominate the ball and possession and so on. So I think that's what, I think that's pretty much what happened to Bournemouth here. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's definitely the definition of pretty much what the championship is, you know? And I mean, Mm -hmm. these are the two teams just came from it. So 
it's just kind of a reminder of that type of um, game. So you're going to see if you follow mm -hmm. the championship. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the second half comes in. My boy Metrovic. God. God, I feel good knowing that I called some of these players out. Uh, but yeah, he comes yeah, in. He what, gets. What, he what, scores what, a penalty. What the statistics for the um, for the game? Who had the most possession? Things like that. Uh, let's see. I can get to that. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. I'm very interested to see how even was the possession and. How many shots they each had? There Ball you go. possession, Fulham. See, what I tell you? Look, that's crazy, man. That's not how you win a game. I I, I say it all the time. Like if you if you take the lead, don't sit on it. You sit on it. All you're doing is inviting them to come tie it up. I mean, base. If you look at the statistics, if you go down a little, little bit, just based on the expected goals alone. Bournemouth definitely outperformed Fulham. Mm -hmm. I mean, Three Fulham, big chances Fulham had 19 shots. Yeah. They just took more advantage but, of it. They're more critical, you know? Yeah. But, I'm surprised because, mind you, I thought that they were really going to stay at the bottom of the table throughout the whole season, and I thought they were going to be the relegation joke, you know? But Who, Bournemouth? No, man. Yeah. No. I'm not saying that they have quality to compete, but I have I, I think they have quality to stay. Yeah, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. You know, I mean, as far as uh, F uh Fulham, they've been playing well all season, you know, a few hits, a few misses. My boy, I'm glad they put him what did I say? He'll be most effective behind the striker. Yeah. Right. I just can't compare him to Bruno though, man. That's the thing, <laughs> you know. I love Andreas Pereira, mind you. You know, he's my preseason Perlo, but when you got Bruno in front of you, like it's gonna ride. Oh the bench. yeah, I'm, he, of course, a hundred percent. I'm just happy. Uh, I'm happy he found a team though where he's like the maestro in you the know mix. What I'm saying? Like, yeah, where yeah, he's in the 100%. mix. You know, um, Daniel James is in there. Player. Yeah, no, no, for sure. I mean. Let's face it, you're either the top player or you're a bench player. Unfortunately, that's how it goes in the Premier that's, League. That's, yeah, pretty much it. All right. So, I mean, they, they're looking pretty good um, as far as, like, formation-wise. I, I like it. Uh, Daniel James on the right. I mean, I think... I think he excels more on the left, but he, he's, he's played on the right side a, uh, a lot. He he does well on both sides, but I think his best position is probably left wing. So um, yeah, yeah but, I think he prefers I mean, the left wing too. It makes sense for him though, because he's right footed. So you know, and with his mm -hmm. speed, you know, cutting in to take the shot, definitely great. But yep. the problem with yeah, Danny James yeah. is like he you know, he mostly relies on his speed. You know, and yep. after a while, you know, that goes away. So yeah. It's one of those situations uh, that that's going to be tough for them. Uh, it's going to be tough for him, you know, because if he can't figure out something else outside of speed, he's going to be pretty much worthless and he will be on the bench. But hey, you know, they they pulled it together. They got they, they got two points out of it. They came back. They were down 1-0. They tied it 1-1. They were down 2-1. They tied it at 2-2. Two -two. So... It's just one of those situations that was good for, for, for the team overall. Uh, they showed fight. You know, they showed, obviously, they they try to go for the kill. Uh, just they weren't able to get it. For Bournemouth, it's learning how to control the game, right? Um, they had a lead two different times, and they just couldn't hold off. Uh, they, they didn't have control of the ball. They, they just... They were lucky to have gotten the lead each time, you know. Right. Um, yeah, it's a it, it's a tough one. Again, you can't just sit back and and hope that the other team won't score because when they score, that's kind of the end of that, right? So 
I mean, for them, it, it, it's just uh, one of those tough situations that they gotta they gotta figure out. I, and I still don't understand why they just don't start uh, Anthony. Anthony, you know, maybe uh, having two strikers up front, keeping a similar shape, but maybe just two guys up front. Because I think Billing did well. I mean, he did well here, but I think he's done better uh, a little more back, like controlling the play. And then, yeah, yeah. it sucks because. Uh, one of these guys has to sit, but I mean, I would sit Cook, bring Billing back to help control, and then kind of have like a, a two, you know, two strikers up here. Sucking for two, two, two. Yeah. You know, but hey, they also got got a point out of this, so not a loss, but a learning experience, right? Yeah, I would. Ho I would hope that Fulham can stay up on the table. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a football romantic, man. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Here's a rough one. Here's a rough one. Two of the worst teams in the Premier League. Going at it. Oh, my God. And the Wolves, who in years past would have probably destroyed Nottingham Forest. But here we are. This is the season. And they just completely have dropped the ball. Um, they, but they did get this win. They beat a team that they should definitely have beaten. Uh, but by one goal, I mean... Penalty, too. Still a very, a very uh, sad situation for, uh, for the Wolves. Um, they're just, I don't know, man. They're just not performing. I mean, Nottingham had a penalty, too. They just missed it. But again, nothing nothing to write home about. These guys are not playing well. These teams are not playing well. Uh, both of these teams are struggling. Um, the good thing for the Wolves is they got this win against Nottingham, keeping Nottingham at the, at the bottom. And, um, you know, getting getting themselves out of releg the relegation zone for now. Um... I mean, again, with the likes of Nieves, Montino, they're supposed to be controlling more of these games against uh, lesser quality teams and being more competitive against higher quality teams. But they've struggled all season. Maybe maybe this is uh, a little bit of a kickstart. I know that it's going to be one or two more games, maybe one more game before everybody heads off for the international break. Right. But, um, I mean... They have so many. They have so many weapons, and it just doesn't. It doesn't come across for them. You know, um, I, I I didn't like their signing of Diego Costa. Like I feel like his time has passed. Um, he's not effective anymore. Um, he has he has a lot to do to 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 really, uh, in my opinion, be be a top striker in the Premier League again. I think that his time came and went already. Uh, but I don't think that helps them. And I think that they focused on the wrong things in the transfer season during the summer. And that's why it, they're they're getting kicked in the butt for it. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And it, it cost their manager a job. You know, the decisions mm -hmm. taken. I mean, definitely the, perform the, the, the players haven't been performing. That's the other thing, too. But... Mm -hmm. It's tough, man, when you're had like a, such a well uh, steering ship. When they had uh, Nuno Espiritu Santo as the mm -hmm. as the head coach, he was just so demanding of the team, so demanding of the club. They were performing, man. Like for a while, honestly, I anytime, man, you had to play Wolves, I was just like, yeah. Oh, I mean, oh my God, like, here we go again. Like, yeah, all the time. Literally. It was always it, it was always tough because. You look at them, you're like, oh, man. It's always like a, a draw. Yeah, dude, it, it was always a draw, but it was always like a draw where we had to, like, tie the game. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It was just, like, such a headache watching them play. I hated that team, you know, for a minute. But but that's why I like them, though, because I like to hate them for a good reason, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And now it's just, like, they're just not performing. And I definitely would agree with you, man. Like, Diego Costa at this time kind of, like, Man, it wasn't even his time when he was playing in Chelsea, bro. But, you know, that's here nor there. That's 
that's in the past but what's happening now is that i just don't think that is exactly what wolves needed yeah i mean yeah. i i think that they, they they're what gonna need the younger striker that they bought uh last summer i think it was last summer if i'm not too mistaken it's a young kid get uh get us right is it no, Geddes? He was like a super tall. I think Here, it's a kid on. with long hair. It wasn't this guy? The Portuguese? 25? Oh, they're all Portuguese. I don't know why they have so many Portuguese players. No, that's not him. Hold on. This is, this kid's I mean, I, I'm surprised that Geddes didn't play, honestly. Geddes, Geddes, in my opinion, is probably. The, him with like a triore i think that's you know that's uh something you want to try and take advantage of uh, some use some speed now what who is that triore is that adama triore or is yeah that, uh... adama that's adama you know um where's neto what's it neto that's oh he's injured oh neto uh, oh okay yeah he's that's... hurt he's hurt he's hurt but yeah i mean that's why okay. it, it, it's just been a shame for the wolves i'm glad that they got the w so that they could get themselves out of re relegation zone but i think that they have they have quite a few things they need to work on obviously they need to get some of their guys back uh to fit form um but yeah yeah it, it, it's just it's a sad scene when, for the wolves looking at nottingham forest i mean better on the shape and I, which is probably why they they didn't get scored on as much as they normally do. Um, but, again, Jesse Lingard comes in. You know, Jesse Lingard, in my opinion, should be starting. And he should be starting not on this side, not on this side. Maybe here, a little bit higher, and have these two guys come in and close off the middle a little bit more. Again, Behind the striker is where Lingard is going to be his his best, most effective. He likes to he likes to be the channel where the ball goes through in order to create a scoring opportunities. And it's a shame that he's been misused by this team all season so far. Yeah, I mean, I think he definitely serves better in like a four two three one type of a scenario. Mm -hmm. Maybe a four three three, but but. If uh, if the middle midfielder would be a little bit more deeper, giving him a little bit more freedom to go forward, you know, or like yeah. a four three three attack, where you have like the two outer midfielders just kind of like back a little bit, while it allows him to kind of be like the, like you said, like the channel between the midfield and the final third. That's where I think Lingard's at his best. Yeah, I do like his performance and stuff of the right. Yeah. I just don't think he's got the speed there anymore when it comes to that. Yeah, yeah. So Don't forget, man, because the just... game has changed so much the last four years when it comes to speed. Yeah, it's been a tough one. It's been a tough one for Nottingham Forest and, you know, making acquisitions and everything else. Um, I mean, again, we said it before. I don't think they're making it this season. I think they're going back down to the championship. Um, and they're just, they just keep showing why. Hmm. But that's neither here nor there now, right? Let's take a look at uh, Tottenham and Everton. I mean, let's just face some facts. Tottenham is supposed to be Everton. Tottenham has the higher quality players. I mean, they waited until a little bit late in the game, second half, to actually put some goals on and do some stuff. But um, they're doing okay. Um... In my opinion, when I saw Tottenham play against Arsenal, uh, their defense, they just looked like their soul left their body when they got scored on. And that's not what you want to see from your defense. That's a, Even if, if they're good, they're going to hold, hold you in a certain position, but you're never going to rise to the occasion when, mm -hmm. when you have guys that just are demoralized as soon as one goal goes in or... You know, you guys lose the lose a goal, you know, lose a lead or something like that. 
you need guys, character guys that are like, you know, like, it's okay, let's go and push the rest of the team. But when your whole defense is just like, they're like, and they're doing all this. I mean, we've all been kids. A lot of people have kids. When you see a kid do that, <laughs> you know you you know you just bothered their life. Period. Right? And that's that, that's how Tottenham looked the other week against Arsenal. They got scored on dire. Like, my guy, it's one goal. Get everybody back on the line. Let's go. Why why are you losing yeah, you fighting hard, but it's part of the game. I just I, I don't think they have the heart. I don't think they have the heart. I don't think that they have really good quality up front, but I think that that their back end defensively is not it. I think their defense is probably their weakest aspect. And, and Larice, he's looked like he's lost a step. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's and, and it's sad because you have Son Harry in, in, in their prime, in their prime. Just these guys are just going insane. Yeah. You know, was, so it's tough, man. It definitely is tough, and it's surprising that the defense is what's struggling. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't say that when they, they won 2-0, but we're, if we're talking about that Arsenal game, it's it's tough because it's like Antonio Conte would not stand for that at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm assuming yeah. that's why they showed up at this game, and they definitely performed better. No, and, and that's granted because Everton is a team there should be. So you did your job. Doesn't mean you have heart. If you don't have heart, you don't have anything. You know, and, and, and their defense has been like, I feel like Davies uh, is the only guy back there that even shows heart. The other two, um, Dyer and, and Romero, man, I see defeat in their face a lot. It yeah. just, and it doesn't make sense because they have a really good record. And, you know, yeah, you just want to go down against one of the better teams. Okay. Doesn't mean you, oh, my God, they just scored on us. It's over. Like, man, come on. I, I, see, you, I think the Arsenal thing is an illusion, too. They're not mm. that good. They're not as good as people think they are. They're going to crumble, if not this month, probably next month or after the World Cup. Mm. I can't picture them doing what they're doing now. Were they even mm. in the top four? Last season? Who? Uh, Tottenham? Arsenal. Arsenal? Man, I do not think so. I think they were just right outside the zone. That's what I'm but saying. Yeah, I'm but yeah, but we'll, 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 we'll get to Arsenal soon, I guess. They're, they're in one of the other games, I think. 100%. It's just any time I get to talk shit about them, I... I, I just <laughs> 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 but uh, I, you know what? The one disappointment thing I will say about this game is the only thing I have to say about it. I wish Richarlison would have shown up a little bit more. I wish he would have had more shithousery. I'm, I'm going to tell you this right now. Since Richarlison has joined Tottenham, I feel like he's lost his his identity. He he just he isn't the same yeah. guy. He's um he, you know yeah he was the he, guy in Everton you know yeah, yeah man it, I just it does it, it, he's not a fit for that team he's not a fit he just doesn't fit in that in that whole team it just doesn't sit right with me I think I think he's one of those guys that has so much to bring but this team the way it's constructed. He he can't be the best him. Yeah, you know. Uh, now on the Everton side, you know, Mupai Gray. I mean, they they're one of those frustrating teams because they 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 can be very good. They can be very competitive, and I mean, they beat the teams they're supposed to beat. But then they are kind of like absent when they're playing the teams that they're supposed to be competitive with. So I mean, losing to Tottenham is not is not a oh man, life is over. But it is one of those. Uh, you you probably should have put up more of a fight. Yeah. Um. Let's make goal differences. You know, make a big difference. Make a huge difference at the end of the season. 
Yep. Who knows if this is going to be that game that they look back at and say, hey, maybe we should have uh, shown up a little bit more. Yeah. Now, the, the one, the one th key thing for Everton that I've seen uh, throughout the season so far is Ayobi. Alex Ayobi is... Uh, He's doing as much as he can. He has that passion. He has that drive, and he's been pushing that team as much as he can. Even the other uh, the other week when they lost to uh, to Manchester United, he he got the only goal for Everton. But I mean, he did work that whole game. He was everywhere. He did a lot, and it's sad because I feel like he's wasting his talent. Yeah, it's just. I mean, he, also, just, he also helped with our uh, second goal. He was the one that lost the ball, <laughs> which allowed Casemiro to give that awesome pass. But he took it from Casemiro first. That's what I'm saying. Look, look how much he helped us. If it wasn't for that, we would have not win the game. Yeah, yeah. He's my but, awesome uh, hero of that game. But, you know... I, I feel bad for him. I feel like he's wasted his talent when he was um, on every team he's been on. Because um, he was with Arsenal last season. And I forget who was with, he was with before that. And it's just like, they just can't find the right place for him. He's just not fitting. And he's got skill. He's got a lot of grit, a lot of hustle. It's just, it, it's sad. But I mean, not much loss for Everton. I feel like, like they can... They can get back in the see, so I feel like they can definitely get back in the swing of things. They just need a, a you know a lighter opponent next week or whatnot. But we'll see what they got. <laughs> it's the I Premier mean, League, bro. They're all <clears throat> tough opponents. Yeah, yeah. Then we had Austin Villa versus Chelsea. I mean, let's just face facts. Chelsea's supposed to win this game. It shouldn't be a competition. Yeah, you know what, though? I would say it should have been 1-0. That mistake by Minks, man. Like, how can you make a mistake like that? Like, give the ball right in front to your opponent team. Like, Yeah, I mean, that's what makes him a, an average player and not a superstar. Because Minks has been around for a while, and he has the ability to be a superstar. Player. Um. Overrated, depending on who you're asking, right? Because I don't think he's ever been um, a super. I think he's a solid defenseman, but I think that he just hasn't turned a corner, in my opinion, right? Yeah. But I mean, the lineup that that Austin Villa put out should have been more competitive. I mean, you have Watkins, Ings, Bailey. Bailey's got speed. Ings just has a nose to the net. Yeah, Watkins, he, was, he was very close at scoring, though, Ings, man. He he had a good two chances, I want to say. The clear one was definitely when he had the ball right in front of him, but just missed it by, like, that much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it just it's just baffling. You know, and then Watkins. Watkins was one of those guys, like, he got, what was it? They bought him, they bought him and they sent him to uh, Borussi, I think it was. Or, no, no, uh, Borussia, not Dortmund, uh, the other Borussia. Uh, but he played He played in the Bundesliga for a season. Comes back. You would expect him to be on a higher level. Like, okay, cool. Nothing happened. I feel like... Yeah, I mean, German league numbers don't translate that well with uh, the English league. Erling yep. Haaland is a different story. Well, well no, I, I mean... And the crazy part is that before he before he went there, he had one hell of a season in the Premier League. He he was scoring. Walking? You know, yeah. 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 That's why that's why they, they went after him in the Bundesliga. And he went out there, he performed well there again, he comes back and I feel like so he's with, underperforming this season. With Arsenal. What happened? Was it with Villa or with Arsenal his first season in the Premier League? I believe it was with Villa. Oh, okay. I don't know why I was confusing yeah. him. I thought uh, he, he might have been playing for Arsenal at, at one point. No, I don't believe so. I mean, Chelsea did what they're supposed to do. Um, 
snooze fest from Sterling, though. Well, y you know what? I I'm going to give credit where credit is due. What makes a good team is that you don't have one player that carries everybody. You have a team. And whether it's Sterling, whether it's uh, Havertz, uh, Mount, uh, the reason they find a way to win is because if Sterling is not there, Mount shows up. If Mount's not there, uh, and neither Sterling, Havertz shows up. But it's always one of those three that's showing up and making things, you know, a problem for the other team. So they have they have good a good scenario here because they just continuously uh, can rotate different players to, to cause a problem. The right. problem that I have with this team is you already had an explosive winger in Pulisic, and you've pretty much benched him. And now Pulisic is getting almost no minutes, if any, and... I think he's gone. I, I, honestly, I think Pulisic will be gone by the end of this year, uh, or even by the transfer window. He might get traded off. Do you think he'll come to America, or do you think he'll stay in Europe? If he's wise, he'd stay in uh, in Europe. I would if have liked to play with Man U at one point. If, if he's wise, that's what I was about to get to. If he's wise, he'd go to Man U. Obviously, people. Man U bias, it's just one of those things, right? We're Man U, love, you know, we love Man U. That's just our team, whatever. But he was a Man U fan growing up, though. That, that's what I was going to say. Polosek has always been a Manchester United fan. Even to this day, he still watches the games. Just saying. Yeah. It, it, I mean, watch I, it when you can play it. Right, but at the same token, right, for Manchester United, if if Manchester United were to get him, uh, it'd be a waste almost, uh, just because we still don't even know he's going to fit what they're, whatever they're trying to do. But that's right. all another story. We'll break into that if, we, if there's more rumors about that talk. Uh, but as far as this one, you know, Chelsea did what they're supposed to do, also Villa did what they normally do against bigger teams and just lose, mm -hmm. right? Uh, let's see. Arsenal leads. Surprising. Leads, uh, leads, uh, gave it, gave it a really good go. Um, they didn't allow much. Um, you know, Arsenal was only able to get one. This problem. Leeds misses a penalty kick. That's tough. You're playing one of the top teams, and you can't bury a penalty kick that would have kept it tied. I mean, come on. And they fought for that penalty too, man. Like, fought hard for it. Like, they had to, like, yeah. run up to, the like, the referee. And, and, like, and really... look, and, and for, for people to look at the stats... It was a pretty even game. Both teams had a lot of possession. You know, it was a slight edge to Arsenal, but, I mean, look who had the the big chances. Leeds did. I was going to say that, right? Dude, like, 16 shots, three big chances. Like, they just had it, man. And uh, they just couldn't put it in the back of the net. It's weird. Efficiency is what this is. Arsenal had one big chance. They missed one big chance, but that means that they just got one BS chance and they they, they scored, right? Um, yeah, I mean it's just one of those games uh, that showed that Arsenal is human. They're not machines. Um, I barely came away with a win, which is kind of sad, considering the comp level of competition they were playing. But on the flip side for Leeds. You only lost 1-0 to Arsenal, who's blown out quite a few teams. So, you know, hold your head up high. Know that you 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 played well. There was something to your game, uh, and it just didn't click towards the end. That That's it, you know. For Arsenal, hey, a weak team almost beat you and showed you uh, that you're not okay. 
So keep an eye on that. Yeah, well, I think this might be the beginning of that little crumbling that I was telling you about. Remember what I said? I said that on our first show. I don't expect Arsenal to stay on top. I feel like they always crumble under the pressure. Mm-hmm. So I'm just waiting. 100%, I'm waiting. Bro. I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for them to shut me up, or waiting for them to just let me know what week it's gonna happen. That's it. <laughs> send, me an, <laughs> send me an invitation. How, how about it? Huh? But just, yeah, just just send me send me a message. Be like, yo, uh, so we're gonna crumble this weekend, and that's it. Does this weekend work with you? Yeah. yeah. Does, does this weekend work for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty much that's it, man. I mean. It, it, it's sad because they really have had some great teams throughout the years, man. And they just it, just, it just falls apart all the time. But, you know, hey, listen, they, they did what they had to do. They got the win. Um, still, up front, like this whole midfield up front, super dynamic, man. All these guys, the way they move the ball, the, the way they move with and without the ball. Just amazing to watch how their how their chemistry has gone. Martinelli, I think, and, and De Jesus um, really added a different dimension to their game that they've been missing. Even when they had Obama Young, uh, and even when they had uh, Lamar, what, what was it Lamar they had? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when, when they had those guys, like there was just that that dimension yeah. that was missing. Yeah. So, like I said, that was another one too. Oh, it was like a sudden. Oh, yeah, they tried to have Lamar. They lost him. Yeah. Yeah. The one cool thing that happened. The cool thing about Martinelli being. uh, About Martinelli and Jesus having a good dynamic like that is that it leaves Saka room to actually own the wing Uh a little bit. You know? I thought it was so weird the few games where. um, Oh, my God. What's this guy's name? Arteta. He put him, like, as as a fullback, I think, at one point. I just didn't understand why he was doing that. Like. I think I think they were just testing a few things out. Um, I just think know. they didn't have any good players at the time. You know, this is the time before they had uh, White. You mm-hmm. know, and uh, I don't know who's on the left wing now, on the left back wing, but it seems like they actually have decent players now, so they can actually now put him where he needs to be. Mm-hmm. I just wish he played for a better team like Man U or something like that. <laughs> yeah. The bias is showing people. The bias is call him out on it. Oh man, oh, oh, uh, we gotta do it. We gotta do it. Ah, uh, you can have this one, bro. <laughs> I don't even want to get into it, man. There's it's a lot so of upsetting. Take, there's a lot of positives to take from this one, and there is just one negative thing. It just makes it such a bittersweet affair when it came to this game. I definitely think we've shown big, big. Um, changes in the defense, man. We're actually keeping clean sheets. When was the last time you were able to keep like clean sheets? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this is like pre Alex Ferguson. I mean, not pre. I'm sorry, pre Alex Ferguson retiring. Like definitely during his era. So we're definitely seeing improvement in that. The midfield is definitely communicating a lot better, but you still have the, the same players trying to make a better uh, system. Fred my, my, and Bruno just don't work together. It just doesn't, man. Listen, it doesn't work well, that well. My, my problem with the whole scenario is real simple, right? Let's start off with the defense. On the defensive side, the entire defense relies on Varon staying healthy. That's it. He goes down, Defense is down. Sorry. The Iceman, he's good. For those that don't know, that's uh, Victor Lindelof. He's he's a good feeling, but he just, he's not, he can't hold it. He can't, because he I doesn't get a good feeling, to be honest with you, man. Well, that no, 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 been with no, no. for like five years, and it can seem to like make himself a first team staple. Just cannot. No, 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 he made himself a first team staple. The, pro- the problem here is. Like, he was doing well. I mean, he carried Maguire through so many, right? Um, the problem here is that he is one of those guys that needs to play consistently to stay consistent. And he's not playing consistently, so it makes it difficult when you get into a game, 
or when you get called to say, hey, you're going to start in the game. Because when was the last time you played a game? A couple of weeks ago. Man, I can't remember what shirt I had a couple of weeks ago. But if you watch yeah. my videos, you probably know that I probably had this sweatshirt on. Just saying. Right? But at the end of the day, it's, it's just one of those things. It's like, if you're not playing consistently, it's hard to maintain that. No matter how much you practice, it's right. not the same thing. Period. I'll tell you one thing. Just because you said that, that's exactly why I also feel we don't need him. We need players that can show up at the last second. That's how we won the biggest year of all time in 99. That's how we won the treble, dude. Of course. A sub to come in. And at the last second, he scores the winner. This is Man U. If you can't perform off of the bench, then you shouldn't be in the bench at all. You know? It's as simple as that. 100%. Now, he's there. I, he's there because Maguire is injured. I get that. But, man, Well, I, I mean, I, okay, you know, okay, the, okay. The, slow that right? one down. Wait, slow, hold on. Slow slow it down. I would say Victor Lindelof over Maguire any day of the week. Period. 100%. And that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to get to, dude. Like, that's the problem that we have. Right. But, I, so, with that being said, the problem here isn't isn't only that, right? It's the team has been in shambles for so long. Nobody really wants to come here. Mm. Period. So Veron came on the whim of Ronaldo coming. And the challenge, according to him, right? The challenge was the main thing, supposedly. But we, we he knew Ronaldo was coming. Same reason that Casemiro came. He said, I came here because Ronaldo said he's, he's going to play here this season. That's it. So, I mean, we're not trying to rebuild the old school Real Madrid. We're going to need wheelchairs. Like, we're not trying to do that. I think we're getting we're Cruz and Modric next summer, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. And then we're going to get Benson one, too. <laughs> well, Benson might take. Benzema is just... Yeah, because Benzema's still in his prime. I'll definitely take him right now. If they, if they go and get Marcelo right now, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Next thing you know, Luke Shaw's being replaced for Marcelo. Oh, my God. No. Oh, no we're not Speaking doing of that. Luke Shaw, he actually did really well last game. Who? Shaw? Yeah. Shaw's been... Listen. There's no problem at left back. Both of our left backs have been performing outstandingly. They both, yeah. they, they both play well, right? It's just different different types of players for different types of scenarios. Uh, yeah. Yes, dude. And I'm happy that we actually have that now. Right. Uh, well, well, well uh, Malaysia, I, I think he's feistier, faster, you know, um, has a new mind, a, a new age mind to do like different cuts, different plays, type, that type of stuff. Whereas Luke Shaw is the old school player with the body. Like, you can't body him off the ball that easily. You know, he's a, he's a guy, he's going to run it down fast. He's going he's gonna to create a space, get his crosses over. It's good to have that dynamic on that left back situation. Um, yeah. Now, now, midfield for Manchester United is same problem with Fred. Consistency, right? We need him to play consistent, but he's one of those players that cannot play, cannot play at a at the highest level. Not saying that he doesn't play at a high level, just at his highest level if he's not playing consistent. And that happens to anybody, right? I think it's more than consistency when it comes to Fred, though, man. Because when it comes to Fred, he's he's an enigma because he's all over the field. You see him trying to do all of this stuff, but he's not doing it. And, like, nothing's really happening. But then when you get all these stats, it's like, oh, he was, like, the best passer of the game or something like that. Oh, he was uh, the guy with the most uh, possession uh, held or things like that, you know? Now, 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 I'll tell you this, right? Obviously, I've played hockey. I've played soccer uh, to very high levels in my life. Um, there are certain guys out there that when you're looking at them play, you're like, what in the world are you doing? 
But those guys know how to play like that. And they can make differences. They can do things. And you're just like, I don't know how you did it, but it worked. And then you just kind of go away with the, what, what just happened? You know what I mean? And <laughs> he's thing, he's one of work. those guys. No, it didn't work this time. He missed two goals that he could have scored. The problem with the Brett and Bruno in this game, though, in this game. But here's the thing, though: when it comes to Bruno and Fred, the problem is this: Bruno thinks he's like a shadow striker, so Bruno's going to push forward a little bit more, which makes Fred kind of like try to like cover some space now that he now needs uh, for Bruno heading forward. So that's where mm. you kind of see him all over the place now, because he's now he's trying to fill into that pocket that Bruno's lacking. He's technically our, def our uh, defensive midfielder, so he has to run back. And then you're also. I mean, I, 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 I think it comes. Fred is not. A yeah, player but that can I, I think it comes to. Like you need to no, but next see, to him. I, see that that's the thing, like right? Four three three with like Casemiro on the back, and you have both Bruno and Fred both heading forward and tracking back right that would Agreed. work but bruno right. naturally doesn't want to do that bruno wants to stay in that 10. Mm -hmm. and i'm sorry now, between bruno and fred i'm gonna go with let's go with bruno well now now this is what i want you to hear right yeah the the the, the whole thing here is with, with with that whole midfield for uh for manu there's certain combinations that you need to keep together Right and right now they're trying to figure out who can who can Casemiro play with, because so far he's kind of struggled with anybody that's been out there. Bruno, somewhat. Bruno, Bruno, and and, and Christensen work. Fred McTominay work. That's just two different sets. Now, this is why I didn't understand what the big deal of getting Casemiro was because. Casemiro's sturdy, right? I'm not saying he's over the over the hill, but we didn't need we didn't really need him. He doesn't add anything to our game right now that we didn't already have, right? Because defensively, McTominay was not bad. McTominay was good as long as he was paired with Fred and vice versa, right? And when we got Christensen, him and and, and Bruno clicked right away what was the reason to get i think Casemiro? they clicked better because er i think bruno and erickson work better because erickson for some reason this season is heading back a little bit more he's not going so much forward like he used to with inter or even hot so I think and, that's and that's why fine that's right but their chemistry was instant yeah you, you understand that i can't explain what? that's just natural that just happens you know you just of show course. to the field and you're like well, of man, course. Man. Yeah. I mean, I, I I had the same chemistry with certain players when I played hockey or when I played um when I played you know football, soccer, however you want to call it, depending on where you're watching from, right? I <laughs> I had chemistry with certain people. I get it. Still doesn't explain why the hell we brought Casemiro in. I think because it's definitely a big name that has a major factor to do with it. But I'll tell you one thing, man. You may be saying all this, but Casemiro can do a job that both Fred and McTominay have to do together. He could do that by himself. He just needs still time to get adjusted to the league and get adjusted to the team. He needs to I, get adjust. He needs to get adjusted to one thing he doesn't have: speed. Well, that's why we kind of need to have him in the back, you know, like and keep him kind of there. He does have better pace than McTominay. I will say that much. But McTominay he has, has the he, long legs. He so has he better play. pace. Nah, negative. negative. I, he does. I think he's a little bit faster, but McTominay has the longer legs, so his strikes are a little bit longer, so he covers more ground because of that. That means he's faster. <laughs> <laughs> you just said it yourself. <laughs> but yeah, okay, we spent a lot of time on Manchester United. Listen, that that whole midfield, that 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 back, are very, a, are very dependent thing, on particular man. players. Yeah, it's uh, a big thing, though, because, listen, if you don't have that midfield fixed, you're not delivering to the forwards. And the problem yeah. with this team, the reason that they didn't score really was, was dude, the forward line weren't backtracking and they weren't really trying to beat their opponent. They're kind of like passing I, it back. And that's I, 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 I'm going to tell, exact, tell you, I'm going to tell you exactly, I'm going to tell you exactly how, how this formation would be the best Manchester United we could put on the field. 
You ready? Shoot. Okay. Malasi or, or, or Shaw, doesn't matter. These two. A, uh, Juan Bissaka, after he gets on his on his grind of playing consecutive games and gets to his, t his top form, where he's doing all the slide tackles, yeah, he's not going to contribute to the offense. But with the current midfield of Christian Eriksen, and I would put uh, Christian Eriksen here, put Bruno here, put Anthony here, put Sancho on the right, Rashford here, and then Martial here. That would be our top line. Period. No questions. No arguments. I Wait, promise you. You're saying putting Anthony as a ten? Put, put yes. Put Anthony right here, right behind them. Give uh give Jordan Sancho the right side. Right. Put uh Rashford on the left. Martial here. Anthony's gonna come up this way and cut right here, and he'll have a way better chance of, of doing even more damage. Because they'll be focusing on Martial a little bit higher, and vice versa. If if it goes to Anthony, Martial will make those cuts, and then so these guys on the wings, huh? Will be in the back. What do you mean, right here? These two? Yeah. Erickson, uh, Erickson will be here, and Fernandez. So Fernandez and Anthony will be right here. So it'd be, it'd be a one. I mean, four, one, two, three. So four, three, three for the holding back. Mm -hmm. But see, but that's why I think they got Casemiro for, because they, he wants us to move towards that direction. And I think they got Casemiro because we couldn't get Jude Bellingham this summer. Oh, Bellingham! Is I can see that being a thing. Yeah, but Bellingham is not going to be a holding midfielder, so that doesn't hold any weight. He's a, he's more of an attacking you're gonna, midfielder. You're gonna, you're, gonna have, you're gonna have. I'm telling you, it's gonna be Bellingham, Bruno. And if everything goes well, McTominay keeps improving at the pace that he's has been this summer. I think he's going to be the Casemiro role, and I think that's why they honestly brought Casemiro for McTominay to learn from him. Mm. Well, sorry for all the fans. We're uh, as you can see, we're Manchester United fans. We have a lot of intel on that I just squad. I think that this is a positive game as much as it was negative. And it's definitely goes to show a lot of our free, uh, weaknesses, definitely, like you mentioned, like with the pairing, it's too much like pairing. It needs to be able to work fluently. And I'm mm -hmm. down to for us to do some crazy things like you, you just said that there, dude. Why not? No, uh, no. Yeah. Uh, for Newcastle, um, you know, it's one of those games they got away with. Uh, they definitely should not have won that, uh, had even a tie, but they got away with it. Uh, and yeah, I mean, what do you think of that VAR moment? Uh, there's actually a lot of things that I, I, I mean, I don't mean to bring back Man U again, but like one, the, the yellow card for Ronaldo for scoring that goal. Um, I think that the ball was live. I think that the ref whistled. The player kicked it back to its goalie. For me, that's taking the free kick. He took it. So I think Ronaldo was right to take the ball. He was cautious. He was like a freaking vulture, you know. Listen, you can give that you can give that referee the same scenario five different times and have five different results. It was just it was just the moment. Yeah, that's it's it. just a problem with VAR, man. Like that's the, that whole thing. And like they actually didn't even check that uh, Jaden Sancho up. Uh, that would have been a penalty. That's definitely a penalty. You know, uh, what was it Long uh, Longstock? Is that his name? Doesn't Longstaff. get any of the ball. Just cuts him right off. Longstaff. You know, um, cuts him right off. Doesn't get any of the ball. There's no VAR mm -hmm. check. Like, there's no consistency with the refs. Um, mm -hmm. Like, somebody needs to like sit down and actually talk about like what are the actual rules when it comes to VAR? Because every week is another VAR this, VAR that when it comes to all the people. And like, it's, I but so we're not gonna say here. We could have a whole show on VAR, and maybe we should. But uh, v, 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 VAR has been an ongoing, inconsistent problem throughout the entire season. Um, one week, you could have two separate scenarios, exactly the same. Two different weeks and have two completely different results. That's just the truth. That's what it is. We'll leave it there. Right? It's unfortunate. Right? But we got to live with the consequences of what is happening. And Manchester United should have scored twice. Uh, we did it. We couldn't bury it. And 
Newcastle got away with, with stealing some uh, with stealing a point. But it is what yeah. it is. You know, that came in they, Trippier free kick, man, that just hit that post. Oh, my God. Trippier still has it. Uh, yeah, he does, his man. kicks, he does. His, his kicks are crazy. Um, I'm honestly kind of a, a, a little sad at the front here. Like they played so well last week. Um, I was expecting more from the uh, these forwards pushing. Yeah, you know. yeah, no, hundred percent. Like I was watching some of their uh, previous games, man, and I was just like literally sitting there, like my seeing the same team, like. They were look so ferocious, dude. Like, who were the last uh, teams that they played against? Does, does it say? Um, no, I don't have that on here. Hold on. Let's but see. Newcastle are—they're a problem, man. They're right behind us. Look at that; they're in sixth place. The last team they played was Brentford and Fulham. Before that, look. Five, and, one, and, four, and that's no close game right there, man. That's a 5-1, 4-1. No, I know. I was worried about yeah. that. I was worried about that tremendously. But, hey, again, they didn't show up. And that's the difference between a top team, a regular team, and a bad team. They, yeah. they, they're they a regular team right now. They, they show up some weeks. They beat who they have to be. And then that's it. You know, the other times they're just... They play mediocre or they don't show up at all. So I do think that it's a good thing of how they're playing, though, man. With uh, I think it's what Eddie Eddie Howie is the name of the coach. Um, you know, with the players that he's got and like the type of placements that he's getting with them is really good. Like I can only imagine where they're going to be five years from now. Now that they have new owners with money that they actually want to invest in the team, like, mm -hmm. dude, Newcastle are going to be a. They're going to be up there, man. They're definitely going to be like a top-tier team, like, on the regular. I can see them surpassing Hotspurs if they play their cards right. I mean, the Spurs do it to themselves. I'm not even getting into that one. They just keep fumbling down. Another, uh, another game that one team should have won and the other team got away with a point is uh, West Ham, although they trailed... Uh, from the 20th minute until Rice put in a goal on the 64th. They really had control of the ball most of the time. They kind of just really try to put the pressure on. They should have had more. They should have gotten, um, you know, a goal. But in, to credit to Southampton, they were able to hold um, and keep the game level. So it's just one of those things. Um not too much too much into this team, into either one of these teams. They're both kind of like, uh, well, West Ham is a little bit higher. Southampton has now fallen into the relegation zone. Uh, so it's going to be a very interesting week or two for Southampton uh, before and after the World Cup. So it's kind of like we got to see what happens there. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, they, they, they have some talent on Southampton. Um, it's just, again, inconsistencies. That's just all it really is because they're not a bad team at all. Um, I think they're solid enough to be competitive, but they just haven't shown up all season. As for West Ham, I mean, it looks like they're finally getting themselves back on track. Um, they're moving up away from the relegation zone. Um, and they've just been putting a little bit more of a, consistent team on the field that's really uh starting to grow better and uh yeah i mean but outside of that nothing else nothing nothing that makes me say oh my god this is a team to watch no yeah you know it's just I i'm very excited for this season man because i feel like there's gonna be a lot of these close games i mean look at if you look at the table right now southampton's what an 18th place relegation mm -hmm. zone with eight points and you got West Ham in 12 with 11 points. That's mm -hmm. not a big difference, you know. It's a very competitive season. It's a very, very competitive season. That's why you have teams like Arsenal still in the first place. West Ham should have definitely buried Southampton, though. They really they should have. have. They, they had a lot of chances. Quality. Yeah. They could have definitely done it. 
and that's no disrespect to Southampton because they have a great academy. They they're like one of those again like uh, Leicester where they're uh, not a buying club, they're a selling club. They make big players, a lot of players come out of there. Mm -hmm. um, Virgil Van Dijk, which you know Liverpool right here. Uh, even um, not, was it Mane? Yeah, Sadio Mane came from them too as well. Mm -hmm. So let's see what they well, are. Yeah, I mean, the, sorry for cutting that one short, but. It wasn't really too much to talk about in that game. It, it really was kind of like, you know, one team dominated. They should have scored, but they didn't. And that was it. There, there was nothing special about it. You know what I mean? It's like the Man U game. Yeah, yeah, sad. Um, But here we are. Last game of the week. Whew. Liverpool versus Man City. National game. Nationally televised game. In the States everywhere just about and this was definitely not a snooze fest this was one of those games that every play was dangerous and man city had a lot of control a lot of control of the ball um That's what they, they just do, couldn't finish yeah but they couldn't finish mm -mm. eric holland had so many missed opportunities and it shocked me foden had so many missed opportunities they just couldn't get it in um, now, before we get to the goal, Salah did have a chance about five minutes before that goal was scored where, um, the goalie did stop him, where, um, Ed Ederson did stop him. And, you know, it, it was one of those moments where you're like, oh man, this was a moment. He should have scored that. Um... And then, about, like I said, five minutes later, he's coming down on the same thing. And, man, man, Anfield erupted. It was just mayhem. It was it was great. It was great to see, see Anfield like that because, in all honesty, Liverpool's been struggling. They were in 10th place at uh, the beginning of last week. As they should be. <laughs> but, you know, they're, they're said to be one of the – one of the top top five teams. They they've been challenging for the cup for the past three seasons. Mm. They won one, I believe. Right, so it, it's not too far fetched. They're supposed to have it, but since they lost Mane, I feel like the team has been in shambles to a certain degree. It's been tough. It's been tough. Yeah, man. I would say ever since they lost four zero against us in the preseason. <laughs> Everything kind of went downhill. Yeah. Um, I will say, though, that it was really nice seeing a back line like that be able to stop Man City. Mm -hmm. You know, you have one really good defender. Gomez, he's a decent defender. Robertson did a great job. But, man, Milner on the right. Just, that's a bolsy thing to do. It's been you a know? while. It's been a while yeah. since he played there. But but I would like to correct something you just said. What's up? Gomez. Gomez was a game changer in that game. In this game, but he's still a decent defender though. I know. I in this but <laughs> when when you can stop an Eric Holland, you, you you kinda get away from being a decent defender to being like, okay, he's a good yeah. defender. Most importantly though, man, the reason that they were able to Stop him was good because of Allison. I hate admitting this, but he is like one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he really he knows how to control. Well, his listen, that, defense and where they need to be, and his eye that assist, man. Like that's what I was gonna say. Not only was he helping the defense by calling out shots, my man had the primary assist on the solid goal. Like typical uh, Allison Becker too. Like he always does that with Mo Salah, dude. I don't bro. know how, but he does. He scores goals as a goalkeeper, like with headers. Like, why does he have to be that good? I hate him. <laughs> Spoken of the true menu fan. Dude. But 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 yeah, I mean, all credit to Liverpool. It looks like they finally found something here. And maybe they stick with this formation going forward. Um, yeah, because you know, this man, 
I feel like they were becoming too predictable with the 4-3-3, keeping Firmino as like a, a false nine. It, it was just becoming too predictable, and I feel like you're going to need to make a switch. Also, the squad is aging, man. You know, they don't really bring in too many new players like they used to. Uh -huh. It's been like the same core, and that core is starting to leave. You just had Mario Sané leave, and we just said that that's a big impact on the team. They're not as, you know, forceful as they used to be. Yeah. If you would have had Sadio Mane in that team when they played us a couple of weeks ago, mm -mm, we would have not won that game. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, For I love Mavs, the fact that Jurgen uh, Club got uh, the red card and he had to leave. That was awesome. Well, that sucks for him because now he misses the last game, uh, the next game. So That's how it works? Yeah. when They're just like players. If they get a red card... Um, you miss the next the next game. But who's their next game though? Um, Definitely not Man City. Who cares? What we'll, we'll be taking? <laughs> we'll be taking a look at that in a minute. But uh, for City, I mean, they did everything right except finish. I mean, yeah. I've said this before. They are hands down the best team on the planet right now. Period. It sucks saying it, but it's true. You can't you can't lie. You, you can't know what I mean? Like it. like like listen, I obviously I'm a Manchester United fan. hundred percent. I'm never gonna deny that. It's just it's just what I am. Right? But as much as it pains me to say it, Man City is the best team on the planet. And they're just waiting for Arsenal to stumble so they can take over the top and just never give it back to anybody. But um this game they didn't do anything wrong besides that one play where Cancelo just, I mean, it was just a good move by, by Salah with the body and the turn. That's all it was. There's nothing oh, else was, you can do. Was, yeah. No, 100%. You know what that's I mean? masterful. You know, so it, it wasn't like, oh, they, they messed up. Somebody messed up. Somebody needs to get traded or, or gotten rid of. That's not it at all, people. No. It's just hands down. It was just one of those moments. It was a brilliant moment. Nothing can be said. Nothing can be done. It's just a beautiful thing. But as far as Man City, again, I will say one the thing, planet. Yeah, the one positive thing about this game for Man City is, man, Kevin De Bruyne, bro. That's a problem right there. The precise passing and the precise kicking that this dude has is just on world league that i'm not sure if it was in the first first half or the second half that uh cross that he had to uh holland oh my god dude it's just it's so unfair how good he is i mean i i mean all of them guys are amazing i mean uh what is it silva bro that dude just sneaks up on people like there's nothing you can do and then uh like you said the brainer he could just he can hit you with a pin for like fifty yards out. I know. And then and, and then you have you have the likes of Guduan, another one. Like Yeah, yeah, he's just another nasty. And Rodri just gives him so much like calmness because you know he's always gonna be there to you know, steal the ball back or something like that. Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah, I mean just hands down they're probably the best team on the planet. Yeah, I mean yeah, dude, that's just meant this is what happens when your owners Make so much money breaking human trafficking laws. Oh and, God! You know, oh God! So. Strike that from the record. All right. Well, <laughs> let's take a look at the games coming up. Uh, Brighton, Nottingham Forest. Who do you have? <laughs> Brighton. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, Nottingham Forest. I don't mean I don't mean to laugh while saying that, but oh my God, it's like what a season, man. I hope it turns around for them, but. Brighton for the win. Brighton for the win. Uh, uh, Brighton. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Unless, unless they put Jesse Lingard where I've been saying they should put him, it's not going to happen. Um, Crystal Palace or Wolves? Palace should win. They should win. Could but be. You a... know what? You know what? I'm going to give this one to the Wolves. I think that they may have figured something out. And and, and and found a... They, they did get a new coach, and, you know, there's always that new coach symptom where everybody just performs better. 
So maybe. Yeah, so I'm gonna go with Wolves on that one. I, I, I expect them to be an upset and just beat Crystal Palace. Southampton and Bournemouth. Bournemouth for me. I think Bournemouth is gonna just. I think Bournemouth is gonna put it on them. They're gonna be pretty upset about this past week. It is a home game too. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, you're right about that. The bounce back effect. The game was postponed. Uh, I wonder why. They don't want. They don't want nobody to know who the real champ is, bro. We all know it's going to be Man City, but they don't want everybody to know that Arsenal is not going to do it. I'm assuming the commissioner of whoever makes all these games just must be an Arsenal fan. And they just want him to stay in the top of the league before the World Cup, so they can just say that. <laughs> Brentford and Chelsea. I don't know. That one's a tough one. That's Brentford and Chelsea. That's a... Brentford is... Brentford's a surprise and have played really I well. Brentford, yeah, I want to say Brentford just because the upset will be much more entertaining for me. Because mm. mm. if Chelsea wins, it's like, all right, Chelsea won, right? Mm. But if Brentford wins, it's like, Brentford beat Chelsea. I think that's more entertaining for me. And Brentford has been beating big name teams this season. So mm. it'll be kind of cool to see that happening. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh... <sighs> I could also that be in a tie too, though. I, I I I think I think Chelsea's just gonna win. You think so? Yeah, I think Brentford's gonna hold their own for for most of it, but I think Chelsea overtake them towards the end. Uh, West Ham and Liverpool. I mean, honestly, after the performance they just put up uh, a couple of days ago, I think Liverpool's the way to go on that one. Yeah. I could see that either a tie or Liverpool. I can't see West Ham beating Liverpool, though. Yeah, me neither. Uh, Newcastle, Everton. I know who I'm going with. I'm going to go with Newcastle on this one. Same. Same. I'm going to go with Newcastle. Oh, God. <sighs> I even dread talking about this. Tottenham versus Manchester United. 1-0 Manchester United. I can definitely see that. I definitely think Manchester United is going to pull it out. It just depends on who whose defense is the saddest. Yeah. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. That's how sad this is. I think I'm going to put Malasia on left back in this one because he's going to have to deal with Richarlinson and his pace is going to come in handy. We have to have Ron. Because him and Delo have to stop Son. And you have to have Martinez be on top of Kane at all times. Mm -hmm. If we yeah. do that, and if either Casemiro or McTominay hold that pivot, so then you can have either you know Bruno and Eriksen going like how we were talking about before, mm -hmm. I think it's possible. But then also the attack has to show up. I read that Martial might be available for that game, so that'd be nice. I, I definitely put Martial. I'd rather uh, have Martial over, over uh, Ronaldo in this game, to be honest with you. Same, even though Ronaldo is the Spurs killer, it's just the truth. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my predictions: Manchester United uh, two zero. Um, two zero. Oh, oh, Watch, watch and learn. Uh, Fulham, Fulham versus, versus <laughs> yeah, Fulham versus Villa. Um, I'm gonna go with Fulham. Yeah, they're they're home. I just they've been like a better team all season. No. I would like to think that they're gonna win. That's why I want Fulham to win. Now, Leicester City versus Leeds. This is a little bit of a tough one for me personally. But uh, I think uh, Luster is going to pull one out. You think so? I think Luster is going to pull one out. I hope they learn something from this last game. And... Yeah. 
I mean, listen, dude, stopping leads is not an impossible task. It's just, just making sure that, that you can actually score. So yeah, I can see yeah. the uh, uh, city, I uh, left your city beating Leeds, but that's a tough one, man. I, I'm going to go for a tie, to be honest with you, on that one. Yeah. Okay. Well, as we can see, Arsenal is number one still. Man City is now four points behind. Tottenham, four points behind. They're tied with Man City. Chelsea, 19 points. So they're, they're in fourth. Manchester United, 16th. Horrible. <laughs> uh, Newcastle, Brighton, they're up there. Liverpool moves up two spots. I mean, the rest of the other half of the league, I mean. It's a very competitive league this year, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's the difference between 17th and uh, 18th place? Uh, four points. A point. Four points, four. No, no, from for 18th and 17th. Oh, one point, yeah. Just one point difference, dude. That's what's that's what's saving Wolves, Villa, and Leeds right now. Just one point. Mm -hmm. Yep. God, I love this league. Well, I mean, that's that's kind of what it is. I mean, those are our predictions. That was the breakdown of last week's games. This is what we think is going to happen this next week coming out. Um, yeah. Anything you want to add? Nah, man. Let's just wait and see what happens. I am nervous for this hot spurts game. Ah. Yeah, the nerves are high for Manchester United. Um, but uh, I want to find out why they actually cancel that game, man. Actually, uh, the Man City and Arsenal. That's what I wanted to say. Why did they cancel it? Uh like. I could try to find out. Give me a second. I'll let you know. Is it COVID? Dude, if it's COVID again, I'm going to like... Okay. Oh, because of UEFA. Arsenal Manch uh, Manchester City will not play on Wednesday because they're supp supposed to play on Wednesday, the 19th. Um, because of the UEFA, they had to rearrange the Gunners. Uh, Europa League match against PS Eindhoven. That game is scheduled to be on September 15th. Um, yeah, so that's it. Not a valid enough reason for that's me. So... Weak. Because for real, that's what I'm saying. It's weak because Matt Manu played in the Europa League on a Thursday, still playing on a Sunday. Just saying, that's just my opinion. Oh, what about that weekend when we had to play the Europa League and then three games in the league because of that um, the the protests and they had to cancel the Liverpool versus Man U game. Mm -hmm. like, all of a sudden, it's like, you know, it's just not fair being a man you fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Well, from everybody who's watching, we appreciate you. If you have any comments or if you like what you saw, please don't forget to um, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, let us know if we suck. Let us know if you agree with anything you said. Let us know if you want us to talk about anything you want um, or any player you want us to talk about. Do a breakdown. Um, I'm for Fajardo One BW. That's Ivan, and we are the locker room foot goals. Peace.